Hello everybody, one more time, my name is Alex Antenna with Mercados Interactive Partners and in this episode we're going to be taking a look at how to use an image for advertising purposes. Uh, we've done that before and in this one we're going to be using more of a model uh, kind of image. So uh, usually uh, how it works professionally is that you receive an image as a digital media designer from a professional photographer and those images look already excellent look great but that doesn't mean that you're gonna be using those images exactly like they're provided to you by the photographer and so where we're gonna be looking today is how do you prepare those images to be used in advertising in, in your banners or uh, billboards or things like that. So let's take a look at the process here. I have uh, an image provided by Stock Exchange and uh, it is a great image and of course like now it has uh, all the uh, all the uh, process that we are going to be using today. And I'm going to turn it off just to see you uh, just to show you the difference between before and after. So this is the image before this is after, before, there you go, let me actually go ahead and take a look at history here and let me go back here to the very beginning and so I can show you much better now a before and after. So that's after and this is before. So this is the image that we're going to be starting with. So as you can see, the image has already a great, great quality to it. It's well taken and it has a good background. It has been color corrected. So the image itself is looking fantastic. However, there are of course a lot of things that would prevent it from being used directly as it is. And so that's what we're gonna be taking a look at today. So let's go ahead first and let's duplicate the background layer. So you can, of course, uh, use the option key um, so double click on top of the of the layer and just click OK and that of course gets rid of the lock for the background layer and then you can just click alt or option while you drag upwards to make a duplicate of the layer of course you can also and I'm gonna delete that one just to show you another technique you can also just drag and drop in the new layer icon here and that also duplicates your layer as well. So once you have the duplicate layer then we're going to start by creating the blur that is going to give us a smooth skin and so we're gonna go to filter blur surface blur and in surface blur we're going to be using a radius of 30 pixels and a threshold of 20 uh, levels and of course you can uh, play with the settings and a great feature here is that you have a preview window and also the preview of the whole image is happening as you change this you can see that it changes on the fly uh, at least in Photoshop CX6 it happens like that and so you can see the detail at 100% and you can say okay this looks great or uh, it doesn't look as good so basically all you're looking for is a smooth transition in all parts of the skin. Uh, of course this is going to look as if it is too much that you're applying a little bit too much but that's the effect that you want because we're gonna tone it down afterwards and that is the reason why we created a separate layer so that we can tone it down afterwards with the opacity of the layer. So great, so once you have that, then you're gonna hit okay. And you can see, of course, that this looks already like a plastic doll. And so we need to tone it down. And the way to do that is that we are going to add a mask layer by clicking on this icon. And this mask layer is going to be applied to our second layer here. And by clicking on Command I, we're going to effectively reverse this to black. If you do it again, it goes back to white. 
and back to black. What black means is that nothing is being applied. So nothing of the effects that you uh, applied to this layer are being uh, affected at this time. And everything that you paint in this mask layer with white is going to show up. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to select white. We're going to select a soft brush and an opacity of about 65% in normal mode. And we are going to paint the areas of the skin that we want to soften. All right, and, and the reason why we're using 65% is so that some areas can be affected a little bit more than other areas. And so you can control that by the number of repetitions that you apply in each one of the sections. And so you're going to do this in the different sections of the skin that you feel like needed the most. And the reason we're being selective about the areas is because you don't want to blur with the surface blur. You don't want to blur the sections of the skin or the sections of the face that need to be sharp, like the lips, uh, like the eyes. Um, and uh, and everything else that, of course, doesn't need to be affected or blurred. All right, and so this technique, you're going to continue to do it until you're happy with the results. All right. And again, you don't have to worry too much about about overdoing it because we're going to be determining the amount of the effect based on the blending overlay of the layer. And so you can be a little bit uh, I, I guess like not careful with the way that you're applying the effect because you can tone it down afterwards. And that's exactly what we're going to do right now. So, so now it's looking great. Of course, we're not affecting anything in the in the hair or the flower or anything in the eyes or anything that, uh, of of the image that needs to remain sharp. We haven't touched at all. So you can see that our mask is actually looking exactly like uh, the skin, the part of the skin that we actually want to affect. And now we're going to change the opacity to make it look more real. If we, of course, go to zero, it's not applying absolutely anything of the of the blur and if we increase it we're applying more and we're gonna leave it at about 80 percent or so turn turn it off that's before that's after and it's looking fantastic already and because of that toning down it looks natural that's very important to do because you don't want everybody to know that this was used in Photoshop of course uh, everybody knows it almost but uh, you don't want to make it evident with your work. So that's the first part, correcting the skin. The second thing that we're going to do here is we're going to uh, effectively create digital makeup. And for that, we're going to create a new layer. In that layer, we're going to fill it with a 50% gray. So just click here uh, and uh, select a 50% gray. Okay. And we're going to fill it. Great. So of course we can't see anything here, but we're going to change the mode to overlay and that effectively effectively it's not going to affect our image at all unless we burn or dodge some parts of the image and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to select a dodge I'm sorry, a burn tool here. And we're going to select the range of midtones, exposure of 80% here, and a soft brush. You want to make sure that you have a soft brush that it has no hardness, okay? And with that, we're going to start painting in the areas that need to be darkened as if it was uh, makeup. All right, of course, 
ideally you want to know a little bit about makeup so that you can affect it properly but of course you can do everything that you want um, all right and let's go this eye we're gonna paint right under the or right here in the eyelid and uh, making sure that we're not going over darkening this area right here in the eyelid and then of course here down here All right. So that's with the eyes. All right. We can, of course, do a little bit on the lips. And finally, we can do the same in the areas that give shape to the face. And here. All right. So of course, this is, again, too much. And we're going to tone it down by reducing the opacity of the layer. You can uh, measure it. I'm using here 60%. And so that's before, this is after, before, after. So it's looking, it's looking great already. I'm gonna uh, now do a little bit of dodging. So I'm highlighting some parts. Like the eyes. Let's go ahead and highlight some parts of the hair. And of course, I'm doing it here a little bit fast because I don't want the screencast to take too long. But uh, once you're doing it professionally, you would take the time that you need to make this specifically as perfect as you need it. Perfect. That's great. So it's looking fantastic already. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to correct the color a little bit of it. And the way to do this is we're going to create a new layer. And then we're going to press Option, the Option key, while we're pressing this, this right icon here in the Layers panel. And we're going to go down all the way to Merge Visible. It's important that during all this process that you're pressing the option key and as you can see it creates a layer or a copy of all the different layers in this new layer so again option key or alt key and then while you're doing that you're pressing the icon and then merge visible all right perfect now we have a, an affected copy of that we're gonna go to image mode and change it to lab color and hit that you don't want to merge all the different layers so you preserve those layers we're gonna click on command M to bring the curves panel and some people like to just do it with a with a, an adjustment layer but in this case we're gonna do it directly on the layer that we copied here and so we're going to as you can see we can increase the light or decrease the light we're going to decrease the light to make it appear more as a tan. And we're going to increase the contrast of, of colors of a channel, which is red and green. Of course, change the same amount. So if you're changing the amount of red, change the amount of green as well. So you drag the curve from minus 128 to minus 100. And on this side, we're going to do the same thing from, my, from 127 to 
100 so that you preserve the inclination of the curve we're going to do the same with the B channel which is for blue and yellow minus 100 and as you can see as I'm affecting this you can see that it turns blue but as soon as I correct it with the other side to 100 then it returns to uh, respecting the white balance that I'm using it's just increasing the saturation uh, of the colors in that spectrum which is blue and yellow so let's go ahead and hit OK and that's looking fantastic already so let's go ahead and go back mode RGB don't merge again and we can tone this down again depending on how much we want the effect 65 that looks pretty good right there all right so of course we could go ahead and, and start correcting all the different details like all these uh, strands of hair here uh, and for that we would be using uh, the spot healing brush that's ideal for doing that and I'm just gonna demonstrate it with a couple of them so that we see how it's done um, and as, as you saw I try to apply it directly on this one but this one is only with a positive 65 percent so that wouldn't work if we do it like that so once you're happy you can do the same technique create another layer press option and then flatten the visible so the, the latest layer has everything that you need and so you can go ahead and apply it and of course that would get rid of like the hairs that you don't want uh, appearing on your image you can do that uh, as you can see some of them are not like showing up excellent and you would have to use the stamp tool to correct that with the background and make sure that you're getting the result that you want uh, I'm just I'm just gonna now I'm almost doing it already so I'm just gonna hand do it um, to show you how to do it so as you can see it's actually improving a little bit it's leaving some halos there and so I'm going to shift to the stamp tool make sure that you're in the current layer and so select part of the background here and you can paint over and that of course gets rid of the problem areas And again, one more time, this you would have to do extremely, extremely uh, in, a, in a sensitive manner. So you do with a small brush as opposed to the way that I'm doing it with a huge brush. Um, but of course, it's to save some time and sanity here. But I'm showing you now the technique you would like grab from the background. And just continue to make sure that the hairs look natural and of course that's the technique you can go back to a hundred percent once you see something that it doesn't look natural then you can go back and continue to work on on those parts So, of course, we could take forever actually doing it the way that it is, but I'm just showing you here the technique to do it in the proper way. All right, and so, of course, now we have a much better image from what we had at the beginning. Uh, the final thing that I wanted to show was, like, how do I change the specific colors of, of items in the image so that they uh, are matching the specific colors that we need for... Uh, uh, either branding or other 
uh, things in the advertising that we're creating and so we would do so by creating a adjustment layer with a hue and saturation uh, selection here and so uh, in this case if we want to change the color of the flower here uh, we select magenta because it tends to magenta and then we're going to change the hue change the saturation and then correct this to affect those colors and as you can see the lips are being affected as well and we're going to take care of that in a second but you just want to make sure that you adjust the sliders here so that they include the different colors that you want to be affecting once you're happy with the colors that are being affected like that and that's why we used a very heavy change of hue so that it was evident to us you can see this changing also the eyes and the lips and other things in the image that we don't really want now that you do that then you can just go ahead and correct it to the one that you want all right now with this we have of course a masking layer here that is what we're going to be using and so you're going to inverse it by command by clicking command I nothing is being affected now and now all we need to do is paint on top of this with a white brush a hundred percent just in the part that we want to affect Once again, you could do this with perfection, with pixel perfection, just going in, uh, doing carefully what I'm doing here, not so carefully. All right. Now, the cool thing is, of course, we can click here and we can change it now without affecting the rest of the stuff. So let's say that they say, okay, we need a purple flower. Then you can start looking for the purple flower that you need and uh, leave it with that. And of course, you can see that because we weren't careful, we have all these problems here. And all you can do is just go ahead and make a selection mask that we've seen in other tutorials that we've done. Um, or go in carefully and affect it with black and correct all the parts that are not supposed to be flower like that like here and so forth of course as you can see I'm not being careful I'm just trying to uh, not take too long with the tutorial here And that's pretty much it. Again, like let's take a look at how it looks with the before and after, just to finish. And so this is how it looked at the very beginning. You can see now a lot more noticeable that the skin has a lot of trouble, a lot of problems, which of course is, is not uncommon. I'm not saying that she as a model has a problem with her skin. What I'm saying is like when it comes down to advertising, of course, like the quality of the skin is not even real. And so these are the techniques used to correct that. Um, and this is the, uh, so this is the before and this is the after. This is the before and 
this is the after. Alrighty, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and if you have any questions or comments uh, make sure to make them right here in YouTube or visit our website www.mercados.com M-E-R-K-D-O-S dot com Thank you so much and have a great day.